was published in the Chris Report, which became an underground hit. The report covers all aspects of my complete training program in preparing for my first competition and includes details of the nutrition and, of course, the steroid cycles that I use. Because I was his son, and the fact that anabolic steroids was used in the, pro in the progression you know, of competing, that he wanted to get down in words, the fact that, hold on, yeah, my son has been using gear, and I have advised him on how to use this, but we did it for this reason, and this reason, and this reason, and this was the result. Chris Hart got results quickly, but at what price? The short-term medical problems with steroids are relatively modest, and that is one of the reasons that people are tempted to use them. Certainly, there are some guys who get acne. There can be, in some cases, growth of female breast tissue. Most guys who use these drugs don't notice much of anything in the way of short-term effects. And, of course, the long-term effects are rarely a consideration because if you're an 18-year-old who wants to look bigger and more muscular next month, you're not going to be worrying about whether you're going to get a heart attack when you're 60. If even small doses of steroids can create long-term problems, what happens when extreme doses are involved? Greg Valentino was about to find out. Anything in excess is going to cause side effects. And of course, there's not a bodybuilder on this planet who has not had some sort of side effects from taking steroids, even some supplements. You know what I mean? It could be something simple, as in taking a protein powder and having, you know, shit in every five minutes, you know, blasting farts all day. And, you know what I mean? You're around, do you ever been around a guy that lifts weights? You're like, dude, you know, every five minutes you're smelling, you know, rotten ass. And that's because, you know, he's blowing his ass up, you know, from taking all the supplements. Well, that's a small side effect. When you're taking steroids, you get big side effects and I of course I had big side effects after years of steroid injections Greg's bicep was fighting back I had tons of you know needles you know syringes needles the whole bit and I'm over there reusing needles dropping a damn thing on the floor blowing it off wiping it off and then you stick that in you and you get infections you know and that's what happened I you know I wound up getting an infection and um, when I got the infection, it, it, it starts off, you get a bad fever, the area gets red, soft, pussy. It was like a giant zit in there. It was just loaded with pus. And if you don't do something about it, you can wind up in a hospital and kill yourself, you know what I mean? It could kill you. Greg knew he was in serious trouble, so he decided to operate on himself. What you're watching is I had a hematoma in my arm, and I'm draining the blood. Now look. Here you got the needle, look, it's going right into the bicep. Now look, now it's hanging out of the bicep. And this film's like friggin' 15, 20 minutes of just constant pulling shit out. Look at that. I'm filling up whole syringes and I just keep going and going and going. Look, you can see the needle is starting to bend. Oh, man. I love it, though. It's really, it's fucked up. It almost looks like a murder scene. There's blood all over the floor. There's blood everywhere. It's really fucking gross. It just sinks in like a balloon filled with water. Look at the chunks of shit in there. It was fucked up. Greg's home surgery didn't work. After 20 minutes of self-mutilation and two tumblers of coagulated blood, Greg ended up in emergency surgery. I deserved it. I was an idiot. I was an idiot, you know. His beautiful, world-beating bicep was hacked to pieces. You see the difference? Look, that arm's round. That arm's not. You see, when he cut it, you see the cut? When he cut that, went in, forms a scar. That's a scar. I got to get that taken care of. I'm, so, I'm totally self-conscious about that, you know? Steroids had destroyed Greg Valentino's body. He thought things couldn't get any worse. But they did. <laughs> Greg Valentino took so many steroids, his body finally fought back. His bicep exploded. 
but his health wasn't the only problem. In the era of the so-called super freak, to build unnatural muscles, you need unnatural chemicals, steroids, and dealing them is another symptom of their use. This is a bold statement now that there's not a pro bodybuilder on this planet or a guy that takes steroids who hasn't sold steroids either. They may not be heavy duty drug dealers, but I, I, I can't imagine any bodybuilder who trains in a gym who takes steroids, especially on a regular basis, who hasn't at least sold a bottle or two to his friends or to other guys in the gym. That's how it starts, you know. In the UK, steroids are the most popular drug after ecstasy and cannabis. There's money to be made. Um, I say the big, the, the big names have earned lots of money, and they're still earning lots of money. Um, so you, you just don't, you know, you don't step on their toes. Um, and if you're doing, a, if you're doing big quantities, you know, you might only make a small amount of money, but if you're doing a lorry load of it, you'll probably become a multi-millionaire out of it. And Greg Valentino did. What happened was, uh, you know, I, we started, uh, I started out very small with the steroid thing. And it, it just escalated, and as it escalated, you know, I got bigger, uh, uh, not just body-wise, but, you know, selling the steroids and, and in the business, in the drug dealing business, and we were big, you know, I did, I was up there. The US policy towards steroids is zero tolerance. Their use and sale is illegal, driving the steroid trade underground. In the sport of bodybuilding, I mean, it's drugs. You're dealing drugs, so you got to deal with shady people. And, you know, uh, there's going to be... Wherever there's steroids, there's usually other drugs, too. I mean, I could give you a million stories. There's a guy doing time in jail right now, and he fronted us, like, $30,000 worth of stuff, and we got robbed. Well, he took it out on us, you know? He wanted his money. He brought us to a parking lot over by Yankee Stadium, and he had us get on our friggin' knees and give us a reason why he shouldn't kill us. And a couple weeks later, the same guy that held the gun to our head was arrested for triple murder down in Florida. You know, I mean, I'm just saying, these are the kind of guys you're dealing with, you know, and they don't fucking play around. Before steroids, Greg was married for 10 years with two kids, but his underworld lifestyle soon replaced the regular family man. Here you are, I was a married man. I'm not gonna lie to you, I was cheating on my wife. I was living a drug dealing lifestyle. That's what happens. You're out there, you're making money, you're living at night, you're in the clubs. Greg began an affair with a woman named Julissa. When his wife kicked him out, they became partners in crime. She was rough. She was in prison 11 times. She was an ex-heroin addict. She was Puerto Rican, she knew how to speak Spanish, and I had just started dealing with the, the Latin street gangs and stuff. But the steroid dealing trade was getting ever more dangerous. As soon as I get upstairs, guy comes jumping out of a, out of a closet with a shotgun. And the guy's holding the gun to me like this, and he tells me, give me the fucking money. And you're talking about, I, I don't remember the exact, I had like 15 or 20,000, I had a lot of money on me. So I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. And he cracks me across the head, bam! You know, now I'm bleeding, you know, and, and I hit the ground. And about 30 seconds later, I just heard a scream and then a bang. And I see the shotgun guy literally almost falls into my lap. And, 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 and the gun falls right into my lap. You know, the shotgun falls right into my lap. And what it was was Jalissa came in the room and shot the guy in the ass. If she didn't come in that room with guns blazing, I don't know if I'd be sitting here today. You know, the bottom line is, she saved my ass because those guys would have killed me. But Julissa, a drug addict, died of an overdose on the 10th of September, 2000. Things were unraveling, and Greg's luck was about to run out completely. I had been selling drugs for years.